Okay, hopefully you've replicated what we did here. And now I just want to talk a little bit more about audio properties and audio editing as well as audio warping, which allows you to kind of change how your audio samples play back. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of every, all of the samples from every track, so one at a time. So in this case, we're going to highlight all of the hi-hats. Right-click and click Consolidate. Now, the nice thing is if you highlight more than one track's worth of samples and you click Consolidate, it will consolidate all of them but separately. See, our goal here is to take all the individual samples that you had and consolidate them into one continuous audio file. And we've done that for all three here. Now, the reason why we wanted to do this is because if I click on this now, now you might actually be viewing it like this. So you're going to have to double click in order to come up to this view. Now, this is where you can edit properties about the audio. So what this means is I can actually change the volume of the initial audio file and you'll see the waveform increasing and decreasing in size. You can also transpose it. Transposing is something that is very cool because it allows you to change the pitch of your audio file. So if I solo this hi-hat and I transpose it, you'll hear it get higher in pitch if I transpose it upwards. And if I transpose it downwards, you'll hear it get lower in pitch. This allows you to really morph the sound of your audio samples. Now we've got a few more controls that I want to run you through. Detuning is the same exact thing as transposing, but in much more detail. So for those of you that know music theory, this will make sense. This detunes or transposes in semitones. So one semitone is equivalent to one key on a keyboard, whereas this transposes in cents and it actually says on the little info view to the left 100 cents is the equivalent of one semitone so going up or down by 100 is the equivalent of going of going up or down by one semitone here have a listen see we've got to move it a lot more to get any change compared to this Okay. Now, how quality? High quality just makes sure that it plays back the sample at the highest possible quality. Edit and save allows you to, let's say now we consolidated all of the different audio samples into one. If I click save, I can save this as a complete brand new audio sample. Okay. Now, Rev allows you to reverse so that it plays back in reverse like this. And RAM can be quite useful, but also quite detrimental to um, the performance of your laptop, essentially, or computer. Let's say you're working on a computer or laptop that is quite old and the hard drive is quite slow. This means that when you're loading audio files into Ableton, it plays them, it, it draws them from your hard drive and plays them back. And if your hard drive is quite slow, Ableton might not be able to play them back in real time. So it might be a little bit delayed from the time you press play to the time you hear back the audio files, or it might actually start crackling and causing audio dropout problems. If you click RAM, it will store the audio file in your RAM, in your memory. This is fine. It means that it will no longer be drawing it from your hard drive, but it does also mean that it will be using up some more of your RAM. And if you've got a laptop with an old enough hard drive to be slow, you're, you probably don't have more than 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM. So be careful. Don't do this on multiple audio samples because it might fill up your RAM quite quickly. But that's what it does. You can sort of, you know, it's a, it's a backup if you, your uh, laptop is not running very quickly. Okay, now for the warp settings, we're going to talk about that in just a little while. But what I want to show you is just over here on the actual audio editor. What you can do is you can set a different 
start point for the actual audio loop. So you'll see that if I move this here, the start point of my audio clip here is going to be now here, right where this sample is. Whereas before, it was just a little bit behind. And you see that that's actually represented on the arrangement page. If I move this here, it changes the start time of the hi-hat. Now it's going to be playing alongside the kick and the snare. Let me unsolo it. If I move it back again, now it starts and there's an empty um, half a beat essentially and then the hi-hat plays. Okay.